All right. Uh, with 35 states now legalized uh, for marijuana uh, use in a medicinal way and another 18 legalizing it for recreation, the cannabis industry is booming. And marketing teams are making all sorts of claims about the drug's healing power, such as being able to help with sleep, libido, focus, sociability. One company even claims its new cannabis product can lead to weight loss. There's just one problem with all of that. The science. Joining us now, reporter for The New York Times, Valeria Safranova. Her latest piece entitled Counterculture to Counterintuitive Cannabis to Help You Diet. And that is the question. Do these things help you diet? Take it, Joe. Yeah. No, I, I, thank you so much for being here, Valeria. Um, this has been we, we, we've been seeing this for some Edibles. time. Uh, I remember a, a San Diego uh, a Union Tribune piece a couple of years ago that compared all of the bogus claims about what marijuana can do for you health wise to what cigarette companies were pushing after World War II, even going as far uh, marijuana companies, cannabis companies claiming that it cures cancer. It does all of these things. And the science just doesn't back any of it up right now, does it? Yeah, I mean, where we are now, you know, it's very difficult to run clinical trials on cannabis. It's really difficult to get any sort of research uh, approved because it's still illegal on a federal level. Um, and so there's so much potential, but potential is just potential until you can test the claims, right? Yeah, and I guess, though, the, the question is, how are these companies able to make the bogus claims that they make on everything from uh, it, it, it helping you sleep to increasing your libido, all the things you lay out here, to the other end of the spectrum where some cannabis companies actually claim that their products help cure cancer? Yeah, I mean, it's an industry that has very little regulation right now. You know, it's been legalized state by state. And so there's not any FDA oversight. Um, and a lot of companies do make attempts to at least collect survey data to kind of understand how their products are affecting consumers uh, who are trying them. But beyond that, it's kind of difficult to see what else is happening in the body and the endocannabinoid system which is affected by cannabis, we know very little about it right now. Um, there are researchers who are working on it and have been for many, many years. It was discovered uh, in the 1960s. So there are definitely people working on this, scientists, um, but it is tough. You know, they, they have very limited access to the plant. Um, they have to get a license from the DEA and they have to go through a lot of uh, processes to get the FDA to approve their trials. So there you mentioned that obviously it's still illegal federally. You know, some states have now permit use. So are we seeing an outgrowth of research there in those jurisdictions? And what about internationally in other countries where it's a little easier perhaps to run these sort of uh, tests? What, what, are, what are we learning? What are companies uh, promoting from that? So internationally, it's also quite limited, actually, even kind of the famous example of Amsterdam that people think, oh, it's so legal there, it's a free for all. That's not quite true. Um, so you can sell cannabis in Amsterdam, but you can't actually produce it in the Netherlands. Um, so there are a lot of restrictions around the world. And, you know, there could be tests done in other countries, but let's say, for example, in the UK, uh, there is some testing. It's It's very limited. A lot of the the trials that are run, you know, there may be, there may be 10, 20 people um, who the drug is being tested on. Um, so in some ways, the U.S. is also at the forefront of, of, of the testing. So and even for us, it's so limited. And that's why some of these claims that, for example, an edible can help you lose weight. I mean, they're so untested and there there are some reasons why these claims exist. Um, for example, THCV um, in animal trials has been shown to reduce appetite or help with diabetes management. But of course, you have to try these things on humans before you start making these claims and selling them to people um, who, you know, end up believing them and buying the product. All right. Valeria Safranova of The New York Times, I guess take edibles at your own risk. Uh, thank you very much for your reporting. Really appreciate it.
Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.